Welcome to Stateline New South Wales, I'm Quentin Dempster. Even in matters of horrendous rape allegations, justice requires of prosecutors an obligation of detachment. With the liberty of the accused at stake, justice must not only be done, but be seen to be done. That's the rhetoric and the reasoning behind last month's Court of Criminal Appeals unprecedented order removing prosecutor Margaret Kaneen from a rape retrial. The Court of Criminal Appeal found Ms Kaneen had breached the rules by commenting on the case involving a juvenile known as MG. The DPP's office was required to replace Ms Kaneen. In the retrial, MG, charged with having detained and having repeatedly sexually assaulted a young woman, Miss C, in 2000, was acquitted last week. MG is serving a long jail sentence for two other gang rapes. The court's Kaneen ruling was suppressed pending the outcome of the trial. Now it's been revealed, the adversarial system itself, otherwise known as British justice, is being held up to scrutiny. Ms Kaneen. Yes. Crown Prosecutor Margaret Kaneen has been in trouble before for making public remarks about rape trials in which she's been prosecuting. It's a very gratifying result and justifies the hard work of the police investigators and the great courage of all of the victims. Even praising the courage of rape victims and the competence of the police was enough to warrant judicial reprimand. In some of the most contentious pack rape cases ever heard in this jurisdiction, by all accounts, Margaret Kaneen built up a trust with rape victims, steering them through their intense and sometimes aggressive cross-examination by defence barristers. Have you had an insight into the sort of culture that, that pervades these, uh, this sort of offence? No. In their judgment last month, ordering Ms Kaneen's removal as prosecutor in the rape retrial of juvenile known as MG, Justices McClellan, Bell and Hoban found that in giving the Sir Ninian Stephen lecture to Newcastle University law students in 2005, Ms Kaneen had breached the bar rules and the prosecution guidelines. In delivering a biting critique of the adversarial system, she'd canvassed in some detail rape trials, including those involving the accused MG. In our opinion, the rule and guideline which Ms Kaneen breached are not complex. Her obligations were clear. She was to refrain from publishing material concerning the appellant's trial, appeal or retrial. The Court of Criminal Appeal had reminded her that she was not to comment to the media on any trial. Notwithstanding that reminder, she spoke out on an occasion when she must have realised that there was a real possibility that she would be reported. Their Honours said Ms Kaneen's publicly reported remarks indicated she believed MG was guilty. They demonstrate a lack of detachment from the case she was required to prosecute. There is no difficulty in Ms Kaneen privately holding the view that the applicant is guilty. When a prosecutor on a public occasion expresses the view that a person is guilty, although they have not been tried according to law, the later prosecution of that person by that prosecutor tends toward oppression, which is the antithesis of a fair trial. The Director of Public Prosecutions, Nicholas Cowdery QC, did not appeal to the High Court against Ms Kaneen's removal. But when MG was acquitted after the retrial last week, Mr Cowdery issued a statement expressing his full confidence in Margaret Kaneen. The Court of Criminal Appeal held that there would be a perception of unfairness should the trial be prosecuted by Ms Kaneen. I am bound by that decision, as by any other decision of the Court. I remain completely confident that Ms Kaneen will continue to perform her duties as a Crown Prosecutor in a competent and professional manner, with great skill, courage, integrity and commitment. Neither Margaret Kaneen nor Nicholas Cowdery would agree to a state-line interview. But the recently departed Deputy DPP, Greg Smith SC, now Liberal Member for Epping and Shadow Attorney General, did have something to say. I was just shocked that uh, anyone should, could say that this should be, she should be kept out because of apprehended bias. Greg Smith, I know you're now Shadow Attorney General, but uh, please put your prosecutor's hat back on. Isn't there an obligation on prosecutors to act with detachment to maintain the fairness of the trial process and therefore not to say anything publicly while trials are underway? That's correct. So Margaret Kaneen's in the wrong, isn't she? Well, I don't think she said publicly that he was guilty. There's an inference that's been drawn by the court that that's what she meant. In, in what was 
more a private lecture. Mr Smith, the adversarial system is an intense and aggressive game of legal tactics. Hasn't Margaret Kaneen been foolish or unskillful in leaving herself open to this finding that she's breached the rules? Because this decision is unprecedented, I doubt that either of those things will apply to her. I think she may be wise in hindsight, as we all are, and maybe there are things that she said then that she would never say again. And I, I know that Margaret is a very skillful and ethical barrister, and certainly in the trial context, there would be nothing to complain about as to how she conducted the trial. But as prosecutors, you're not meant to play to the gallery. However strongly you might feel privately about a case, you're not meant to give a running commentary. That's correct, but th this... So she's in the wrong. These thing. passages were taken out of a very lengthy speech she gave. They, they themselves wouldn't have taken long compared to the other things she said. I personally think that reading the speech she gave, it was a very balanced speech. These parts were undoubtedly controversial, particularly once taken up by the media. But it's not unusual for judges themselves and for barristers and solicitors to talk to groups of lawyers, for example, as part of their training, about cases they have run or decided upon. But what's this say about the adversarial system? Shouldn't we scrap it or at least reform it to take on the inquisitorial system of Europe, perhaps, where there's a search for the truth? before justice can be administered? Well, I think that system has its flaws too. Uh, I, I think we, we must be prepared to look at these other systems. We certainly should be looking at streamlining the criminal process as it is here, and particularly the pre-trial side of it, because this pre-trial proceeding that the appeal came out of has been going for about two years. It's, I know there's been a previous appeal in it, but it just seems absurd that there could be such delay and so we've got to streamline these cases. Seven years after the original complaint? Yes. Seven years of intense, technical and time-consuming legal tactics through the adversarial system. Trials must be demonstrably fair for the accused, but does it have to take so long?